We're here installing the biggest solar PV system we've ever fitted, but it's also the most unusual system we've ever fitted. You're going to have to wait to the end of the video to find out exactly how many solar panels we've fitted on this project, but I can reveal why it's such an unusual install. But in order to do so, we're going to have to climb a small hill. That is awesome. Before we get too carried away, let's just do a quick safety sort of briefing. Um, Lee, you know best how that works, so can you tell us any potential hazards and things Yeah, do you that... want me to walk around here? Yeah. So you've just got neutrals down, reverses to the right, and you've got gear one and gear two. But yeah, that's, yeah. that's, no, that's great. Thanks, Lee. That. Yeah, we should have panels and the batteries and all that coming from C-Gen via yeah. Rexel sometime this morning as well. Do you reckon we get a couple this way? 100%. So we've got 124 nine kilo blocks of ballast here to weight the system down. Now this is usually designed for a flat roof, but in this case, it's not a roof, it's on ground level. But that is 1,116 kilos of ballast, and we've got to get it up that massive hill. She's got some speed when you get her on full speed. <laughs> Shall I let her rip? Go on. So this is it, our unusual install is on a tennis court. That's right, Wimbledon has finished and the customer has decided to turn their tennis court into a solar farm to generate enough power to run their whole house and power a small amount of their neighbours too. If you're a channel member, you might recognise this place because we've done a few little behind the scenes videos here. And the guys did an EICR in the swimming pool too that you might remember. I'll leave a card up here where you can watch that, which was really interesting. And now we're gonna get everything unloaded and start laying everything out. Oi, oi, oi! <laughs> Safety first! It's really annoying running a company as it gets bigger, you have to be more, more conscious about safety. Normally I would have jumped straight in there and asked for a ride down, but can't do that anymore. Safety first and all that. But anyway, I'm gonna loosen this up. The crowning moment, remove the net. Now you might wonder, why are we fitting solar panels on a tennis court, why not on the roof of the house? Well, to be honest, this tennis court hasn't really been getting used. And that's the thing with stuff like tennis courts. Often people build them, use them for a few years and get bored. And this is a perfect open space, a bit like a flat roof, but on ground level, where you can fit a huge amount of solar panels. Jordan's got us building the new pyramids. A bit of slave labour. North is there, and we're doing an east-west array, which means that you know east is there, west is there. So the rows of panels are going to go north-south, and the sides of the panels will be east-west. So the rails will be something like this, and then you've you've got basically a clip here which sits a bit high, and then another clip here which sits a bit low, and the panel goes like that and then the other panel goes like that and then you'll have like a 600 gap here and then you have the next set. So Jordan's just sent me the rough layout of how the panels are gonna go. We've got a little gap in between so the customer can walk between the panels and just rinse off any like dust, bird poo, stuff like that. So we're just gonna roughly lay out our rail how we think, cause we've not used this van der Volk east-west flat mounting system before. Some good videos online showing how to put it together. It looks nice and simple. So gonna lay it all out, see how the first one goes, and then we can just pick the whole thing up and 
adjust it to where we need it. Start on the bottom row, we'll start on that line. Yeah. The edge of the court. So at least when you walk in, it's all level with this line here. Yeah. So if we move these back here. Maybe a little bit more that way. Did anyone get a before picture of just a tennis court? Oh, <laughs> you have. You could, don't I, lie, you must have had one. I ain't got nothing. Right, take them up quick. Yeah, take them all back up. <laughs> all we need some folks. Come on, you can't do both. Yeah, yeah we'll, one. we'll do one or the other. So what are you doing? What I'll do you? this. Yeah, I'll do the game. Sick, right, deal. <laughs> You have to do this because Lee, Lee's just a master of it. Lee? He's yeah. going to look at, I've already uploaded photos of the panels on, <laughs> even though they're not installed. Just right. photoshopped them on. Lee's really good at getting in there with the photos. You won't see him take them throughout the whole day, but he'll put these amazing photos up in the evening. So we've made a deal that he can do one side, photos on one side of the job, and I'll do photos on the other. <laughs> made a deal. <laughs> I've had to barter with him. I'll, I'll go get some photos of the dumper truck, get some <laughs> snazzy little shots. What's the next bit? Rubber feet? Rubber feet on oh, each oh, one. No, one the, in the middle, then two on the ends. Little things that click on the top. Oh, what a day. I need to get some photos like this. This you'll get photos of this sort of stuff. Yeah, you? get all the pictures of the... See, you're just too good at it though. I wouldn't have done it from that side, mate. From what side? <laughs> I would have got, got all these Van der Volks lined up, mate. Right. Take And take it through the <laughs> netting. <laughs> <laughs> laying on, well, laying on your belly. Get a bit of moody skying as well, that will, that will edit oh, out good. <laughs> Lee's like the cameraman. Sorry, Max. <laughs> So this is the Van der Volk, a Volk Pro Plus system, and it's very, very clever because it's super easy and quick to assemble. Just comes in parts, so you've got the rail, you've got the mounting, uh, the top mounting bracket and the bottom mounting bracket here, and they've already got panel clamps built into them. And then you've got these rubber feet that just cushion everything. The idea is the panels will be at 10 degree tilt, so quite a gentle tilt but just enough for the rain to run off and basically the whole thing is designed as an east-west array. The sun will rise in the east, you'll get more generation on these panels, then as it goes over you'll get more generation on the west side and it means that we can oversize the system to almost double the amount of panels than the inverters are rated at. Now you might notice that these panels look a little bit different to the ones that we usually fit. On roofs, because we want it to look, we always fit all black panels so that they really sort of blend in as much as possible with the roof. However, those all black panels are slightly less efficient than these silver panels. That's because the black absorbs more heat and the hotter the panels get, the less efficient they get. So in this particular case, we've chosen to go with the silver frame panels with the silver back. That just means that we get a little bit more output. They won't get as hot and aesthetics, well, it's a tennis court. It's still gonna look really smart. It doesn't have to blend in with the roof. It is what it is. I think we might need to have an extra one of these every time when the where the ballast is going to go. Yeah, there's leftover ones. So like there, and then the ballast you stack up for. Yeah, they go on top of the rubber feet, don't they? Yeah. If they were all joining together and no walkways between, this end hole would clamp into that end hole and it would just be one long rail. But because we're doing walkways in between, we're leaving them separate. So everything is here, I think. Solar Edge batteries, three off. Lots of panels. Now let me know in the comments your guess of how many panels we've got here. Don't skip ahead. We've got the three Solar Edge inverters, two six kilowatt and one five kilowatt. We've got our trunking. Uh, we've got our armored cable. So we're just gonna base, oh, we've got our optimizers as well. There's a lot of optimizers to go in. So I think we've got everything apart from the duct, which is gonna be used to run the DC cables up to the tennis courts but we're gonna have a little bit of a count up and just make sure everything's here. There's a five kilowatt inverter there. Two more optimizers there. Five DC isolators. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. I reckon give that a go and if it feels all right on the way up, then we can do more. Right, 
Luke has called 10 panels this time, so it's his fault if it goes wrong. Max likes the drama. He wants a good video. <laughs> So it's going well. Super excited about this project, it's awesome. So nice to get stuck into something like this. It's a nice big chunky project. I'm gonna head back to the office now. I've got to order a few extra materials, got a couple of meetings and some more projects like this to plan for. But I'll hand you over to the capable hands of Lee. If we have one standing either side while we're doing this, at least it can't fall one way or the other. One side come off, we're stuck here. We're gonna have to hold him while you eat your veg, mate. Eat your greens. Oh, I, think, yeah, I, I think if you go eat your greens, and blow you. To be fair, that is how I eat my dinner. Salads go with dinner and I eat it all in a one And She's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, because I don't like it. I just want to get out of the way and enjoy my dinner. <laughs> get off the plate. Yeah, like, get out of here, you. Only, uh, what, 30 odd panels left? Actually, yeah, could we not like wedge, wedge a bit of wood? That's it, it's funny tipping, it's just like the grip of them. I'm not, I'm not like trying to be cool with a limp, I've generally got a bad foot. I think she filled it up yesterday. Are you not filling it up? There's a petrol jerry can there. Yeah, it's empty. Oh. Oh, it's cutting out. Come on! Sounds like a two stroke now. Oh, 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 no! <laughs> Shall I go and get some petrol? Or do you want to carry them all up by hand? Do you want to say it's coming back or not? Yeah. Make some noises. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsleigh time. <laughs> cool rhymes. <laughs> There's no way we use this a, much. There's a hole in it, it's just going down on the floor. Oh, this is gonna go. So this array is going east to west, so we need to have these facing kind of north-ish. We're trying to line that up on our compasses. So we've got two, are you trying to put a chalk line on my phone? <laughs> so I'm just, I've got two compasses out on the phones. I know they're not really, strictly that accurate but northish north south is kind of like that according to these two although the apples being a lot more i mean if i point it that way they do differ slightly the sun's going to be coming and it's just going to be going yeah. past south and coming around here Ooh, go on then that looks pretty tasty going down there all right so we've got our first row roughly set up we've spaced it out with the rails but you only have the rails either end with your paving slabs on to weigh it down and then you have a couple in each but it's what the van der Volk system tells you. Like it might tell you to have so many slabs under each for weighing it down. So we're gonna measure a nice gap in between so the customer can walk between and then we'll do our next one, slightly staggered one off because we're going diagonal with the tennis court and then we'll just follow on each one till we get to the end. All right, good morning guys. Welcome back. It's day two. I'm the only one on site as usual. <laughs> but last night, Jordan did send a revised plan of the layout of these strings. Each row is going to be a string, which makes a lot more sense. So what I'm doing this morning, I'm just adjusting it, taking away the ones we don't need, moving them to places where we do need them. So this ballast was on that one. I've now moved that because we want to shorten this row by one. But these are mid clamps and the end clamps are here. So what I'm gonna do is just bring this next to it. And cause this is all weighted down now, I'm just gonna unclip these, swap them for these ones. That's them three rows all sorted out. And then we can just carry on with the others. When you're an electrician, anything's a hammer. My hammer's all the way down, half a mile away at the van. So today it's a plier. <laughs> This is well shady. This is a sketchy part of the tennis court, really, isn't it? I'm surprised there's not graffiti around <laughs> this corner. Some hood rats in the corner. <laughs> Someone rolling some dice. <laughs> what is it, the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> So 
we've laid out all the optimizers, just fixing them down. And now we've got all of our stickers here so we can scan it into the Solar Edge system. Guys are just going along, getting one side of the panels on ready. I'm just going to go along, stick these Van der Volk clips into these centre parts. Once this first row's on, on each bit, we can get our strings through and we can run down this central channel, clip it in through these. That's going to keep it up off the ground. So we've not installed these before and we use the rails where, you see where these um, ballast we're calling them ballast, they're slabs, let's face it. You could put, do a garden with them. But those things there, they've got these little rails they sit on, so we use them to space these out. But in reality, it's not worked out that way. We're just having to sort of move it on the fly and then they not don't look square. So we're having to do them one by one. But as we fix these panels down, it should straighten it out. So it's just a bit of jiggery pokery, so it's gonna take a bit longer than we thought. I don't know what way you wanna carry it. Uh. Beep, beep, beep. Should be able to just slide them rails. All right, first row is on. We're just gonna put one side on each so we can wire from the other side. And then once the wiring's in, we'll put the other side on. So we're gonna leave these guys to this. Me and Ruben are gonna start looking at getting the cables up here. So we'll take you on the route now. Look at this amazing garden. Yeah, welcome to the jungle. Okay, so our journey starts somewhere around here. So we need to get oh. into the tennis court somewhere around here. So we're gonna have to get through this foliage somehow. We're gonna run round, whoop, round the back of this office and down the back of that fence. Then we're gonna keep coming down here along this fence line, trying to avoid any bugs and pitfalls. And there's a water main that comes along here as well. It's gonna be a nightmare, isn't it? Keep on coming down <laughs> into this dank land here. It's so dark down here. We've got to go all the way around this garage, haven't we? It's a proper long walk, isn't it? And we'll be finishing here. So. That dark alley you saw comes all the way down to here. And then we're gonna be coming round onto this wall, coming up and in. I'm not sure exactly where yet, we've got to drill the hole out. But that's our job for today. Swish. It's like, it's like taking your snake for a walk, isn't it? <laughs> Or a slither. Did you know that snakes have feet? Did you know There's that? There's bones in there inside them. Ruben, go down the other end, see if you can hear me. Hello? Hello? Woo! Yeah, I can hear you clear as day. I'm yeah, that is mad. This is, it's almost, <laughs> this is magic. Yeah, this is, look, we need this in between the vans. I need, we need this between our homes. You, you sound me. like the voice of God, though. I feel like I know, I'm getting really crazy. scared in the night. <laughs> This is so stupid. Oh snap! <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> that is mad. Do you think just pull this bit through that and get there, and then most of this, I think we're gonna have to put a join in it behind the house. So pull this bit up and we'll feed it through here and go do this bit through down to the where we need to get to. Right. See what we got left up here, and then we can kind of turn this end, flip it, flippy flop it down there. I feel like this is the episode where John grabs a big pipe. Ah, ah it's got me. We're supposed to be coming in in the corner. But I think we're going to go. Ah, I'm snagged. Ah, it's in my skin. Oh, mate. Ah, oh, ah. It's, it's, it's part of you now. <laughs> Coming through roughly under this big fuzzy bush, isn't it? Well, let's see how we can navigate that corner. Mm. So it might be it easier might be to come down low level on the walkway. I think come along the edge or however we get through, but I think we need to go through there. Bottom of the Pringles, Wayne is what his name is, his official name. Wayne's got such long fingers. He can take out the bottom Pringle without disturbing the rest. <laughs> this is Ruben's theory anyway. I'm, I'm not part of this theory. It's not theory. a theory, it's fact. <laughs> I've seen it, I've witnessed it. And if he denies it, then he's just a liar. In case they get lost and wants to try us. Right, let's find a way in. Is that low enough for you to get over? Yeah. Please don't land on that spike. What, this spike? Yeah, don't slip and land on it. Oh, close. Okay, what, what about the next part? Where are we coming through? What about if I just lift up here? Yeah. What, we'll go through this bit here with the yeah. others? Oh, 
Oh, it's like a Puritan. <laughs> Ow! Oh, Max, ah! I banged my head off the soils. <laughs> Welcome to my forest crib. So this is the workspace for today. We've got bricks, spikes, spiders, dust, pollen, whatever you want. Keep coming this way, I'll show you the cable route. Oh, ow! This bit's quite tranquil. It's so spiky that way. That'll be a blast here, won't it? Bingo bongo. I always get the best jobs really, don't I? Either a small cupboard or a thick bush. <laughs> right, so our route is longer than one of these pipes, so we're having to use two pieces of pipe. So we're just gonna join these bits of drawstring slash wire together, and then we're gonna hopefully pull our draw wires in. So we're gonna pull the draw wire from the bottom to the top, ready to tie on the 10 cables to come back down. <sighs> that is so heavy. So I'm gonna be tying this bit of six mil earth on in these um, tubes, all you get is this really thin wire and it hurts quite a lot when you're trying to pull it. It digs into your skin and we have 10 cables to pull up here. So the idea is tie this on, pull it all the way to the top, then pull this back down. Then we can wrap that back on the drum rather than waste the cable. Where's the end of this? <laughs> did we hear a snappy noise? We he oh, we did hear a twang when we were unraveling it. Ruben! So the cable has snapped inside there, our draw wire. I'm going to attempt to get it out with a trick. Our cameraman Max has bet I can't do it, and he's bet us pizza. So, whoa, 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 whoa. is it <coughs> pizza, for, pizza for just me and Ruben? Or is it just... Just Also Domino's, I don't want no yeah, pizza. Yeah, no, you choose. You All right, yeah. so that's the bet. This is a trick that I learned from some Jurassic Sparks for when cables are snapped in conduit. So if, when you're pulling through conduit and it snaps off at the last minute, you can pass a cable up it with a doubled over end. As you twist and rotate it around, it will tangle around the cable and then it will grip it so you can pull it out. So that's what I'm going to attempt now. It is magnetic. It's maggy. Ooh. I think one more rod is going to be called for. When this is dragging behind, say I go past it. Oh, there's more friction, the, There's isn't more it? of it to get tangled yeah. around it. Does it feel like it's twisting there? It's twisting here, 100%. Surely it has to be twisting there then. If we pull out a broken bit, does that still count? We can't help that it's got broken two places. <laughs> hey, oh, you owe me a go pizza! On. <laughs> go on. <laughs> come on. Oh, mum. <laughs> Domino's has it got meat feast, please. There's a lesson for you. If a cable does come off in a piece of conduit, the same, it's the, the theory is the same. Yeah. Can you leave mine on there though so that people can send me money? <laughs> people can't do anything with your bank account and sort go. code. It's razzed it over. Right, because that snapped, it's kind of ruined our day. So I'm going to head over to the stores and get our, what is that thing called? Cobra. The old Cobra. Woo! Lit! First half's done. So once the cable's up through the ducting from the garden, what we're going to do is either some rubber feet or some basket across from the fence to the first panels. We're going to run something all the way through underneath them and we can drop off a string for this row, come across another string all the way to the end. As soon as the cables are in place and on the clips, then we can do all the panels on the west side. We've got some of this rubber cable protector, a bit like a little speed bump. You can see it's got a little channel inside. So what we're doing is just cutting it down to size to go underneath that panel and underneath this one and then our cables can run between our different rows and no one's gonna get tripped up on them. Ten of these have been marked up with a tag, so you've got one and five there, and then it goes all the way down. So as the drums sit there, two, four, six, eight, ten. It's good. So one and five is one string, two and six, and so on and so forth. Now what I've done is staggered them, so we've got a bit of cable, then it's two for a little while, then it's three, and so on. So if it does hit any snags, you've got to try and imagine it if it's going around the corner and it ain't all 10 cables trying to go through at once, so it's one at a time, 
one at a time. So if it's going around any corners or any kinks, it's only ever getting slightly bigger one at, one at a time. So if you look at the length of this joint, it goes all the way along there, slowly getting thicker. So if there's any, any bits in the way, it shouldn't have any issues. I think the main issue is gonna be the, the drums and them getting all tangled. So I'm gonna now joint this cable onto that one, tape it up and then we'll pull it down. Unfortunately, this is a trade secret. You'll have to, you'll have to uh, let us know in the comments if you want to find out about this one, because uh, I can't let this one go. This is a Winston joint, so sorry. <laughs> I don't feel like Artisan Electric should get the, the praise. I want to shout out to the person that tra trained me, Winston Clark, the greatest electrician in the world, bar none. Bar none. It's unbelievable, the guy's skill. Unfortunately, he had a stroke five years ago, so all those skills have gone with him. But yeah, one day I'll show it on camera. I'm back and I've come with Dan and we've brought magnums for everyone. Chocolatey goodness, because these guys have been working really hard in the sunshine, so leave a comment with kudos for the guys who've been working really hard because there's been a lot of hard graft going on here. So we've got magnums, we've got Coca-Cola, and we're gonna just chill out for a little bit. And uh, they're gonna update me on how they've been getting on. So we've got our 10 cables coming up now. You see them coming along here. So that's five strings we've got here. So two per string. They, if you look at the little mat there, we've got that protective bit and that's running along all the way. So there's a gap between the panels so the lady can come and clean the panels because apparently there's quite a lot of pigeons here. The other panel will cover this bit. You can see here where the strings are coming across. So we're gonna put, lift up all the cables as much as we can and close it up. Then the strings come along each one to here where they're going to plug into the optimizers. So one will go in here. Oh, sorry, that's the panel one. One's going to go in here and one's going to go into that optimizer there. So it's just one end, one end, and then the optimizers are linked all the way through and it's just rinse and repeat on all five. So Max is disappearing for the next few days. So we're going to carry on and we'll catch you on Monday. So this is it. The guys have completed our biggest ever solar install. And I must say, it's absolutely beautiful. And I know you've been holding out to the end of the video so I can reward you now by telling you how much power this bad boy is gonna create. So we've got 62 panels, a total of 31 kilowatt peak of DC solar power. And that's all feeding back to three inverters in the house, two six kilowatts and one five kilowatt. A total of 17 kilowatts of AC power and all of that is connected to 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. The maximum output from those batteries is 15 kilowatts at any one time, which means that we can charge and discharge those batteries at 15 kilowatts. This system is going to basically run the house most of the time. Now there might be times in winter when it's so dark and cold and rainy that the system's not generating enough to run the whole house and fill up the batteries, but then the customer can charge up those batteries quickly with the cheap electricity overnight and run their house on much cheaper electricity. So overall, this system is gonna take our customer almost completely off grid and enable them to run their house on beautiful, pure sunshine. I love it. So we've chosen these special panels because of their high output. Normally we install a 415 watt panel, something like that, but we wanted to maximize the output and we could fit really big panels here. So these are 500 watt JA solar panels and there's a total of 62 of them. They fit perfectly on this beautiful ground mount array. Now it's a solar edge system, which means it's fully optimized. We've got an optimizer under every panel and that means that the customer will be able to monitor the system for the entire lifetime, get a better warranty on the system. And if any panels start to underperform or anything like that, we'll quickly see it and be able to do something about it. Whereas if you don't have a solar edge system, you just don't know whether each panel is working to its capacity or not. This system for us is kind of our base level. We always aim to go with solar edge because it is the standard that we want to work to. Now this is actually designed for flat roofs as I probably mentioned earlier in the video. We're not on a flat roof here and the customer wanted to have access 
between the rows of panels for cleaning and maintenance, which totally makes sense. These panels are only on a 10 degree pitch and actually panels are supposed to be self-cleaning but only when they're 40 degree pitch or more so these will need regular cleaning in order to get the best output possible and we've already seen there's a few pigeon plops around so it's definitely good if the window cleaner when he comes to do the house windows can give a quick clean on these panels too to get them working to the best efficiency possible. So with a huge solar array comes a huge plant room and here we are in this double garage where the clients reserved for us this whole wall to fit all of our plants. So we've got our three inverters here, two six kilowatts and a five kilowatt. We've got all of our other equipment, so AC isolators, generation meters, DC isolators and DC surge protection devices, all neatly tied in with this trunking and our three 10 kilowatt hour batteries here. Now, each of these batteries is connected into its own inverter and the max charge and discharge, as I said earlier, for each inverter is five kilowatts, which means that we can charge them up at 15 kilowatts basically and we can discharge at 15 kilowatts there's just a tiny little bit of commissioning left to do and the customer's going to be running on pure sunshine now the insane thing about this system is that we've massively oversized panels versus inverters 31 kilowatt of panels 17 kilowatt inverters which means that even on a day like today at 5 30 pm on a cloudy-ish day, we're still generating 11 kilowatts of AC power that's going in to feed the house and a lot of it is going out to the, to the grid already. That is the power of a solar edge system when you can oversize in a situation like this where the panels are not in the perfect orientations or angles and there's a bit of shading. You can oversize up to 200% and you can get an amazing output from a system like this. So thank you for watching our biggest ever solar install. If you'd like to see our biggest ever battery install, click the video here. And if you'd like to see a maybe a slightly more normal size solar install, but still a pretty impressive one, you can watch the video down here. But either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.